Hello, everybody. Wolf Fang here. Tuesday, November the 7th. Nice day in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's, uh, I think we hit 72, which is really good. Really nice day. Did my walk at work and did a little short video. That's what I said. Nice day. Happy day. I love it when the sun shines. It's great. Anyway, I'm going to uh, talk about this spider that uh, I watched Mad Shad's video yesterday, and he brought up something about a spider. I didn't hear anything about it. And the weird thing is, after I watched his video and I went back on my laptop, the article was there. It's like the damn computer was listening. Crazy. But anyway, so I found I, I found the article about this spider. So let's jump into it. It says the Jaro spiders are invading the U.S. at an alarming rate. And that is a picture of the spider. And it uh, apparently is a, a good sized spider. So it says that uh, the southeastern United States is witnessing the fast expansion of an invasive arachnid species, Jaro spiders, which is spreading at an alarming rate, according to a recent study from Clemson University. <clears throat> First spot, uh, spotted in Georgia in 2014, these yellow band spiders have firmly established themselves across several states. A research team led by David Cole, an assistant professor in the Department of Forestry and Environmental Conservation at Clemson, has delved into how persuasive the Jaro spider has become and the potential scope of its expansion. <clears throat> Jaro spiders are here to stay. The researchers used advanced modeling techniques that accounted for 20 separate variables. The results suggest that Jaro spiders' native range aligns well with the climate conditions of much of North America. The implications of the findings are significant with Cole stating, these things are here to stay, highlighting the expected continual northward spread of the species, already observed in areas as far as north as Maryland. Sailing into new locations. Hang on a minute. See that video playing below. I hope it's not playing. Okay. Um, it says Jaro spider is dist distinguished by its large yellow body with a yellow and gray abdomen, employs a unique dispersal method called ballooning, which allows them to sail on air, air currents to new locations. This uh, process has facilitated their spread across a vast area now spanning at least 120,000 square kilometers, encompassing Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, and reports from Alabama, Maryland, Oklahoma, and West Virginia. Potential Challenges for Native Species However, the rapid spread of the Jaro spider comes with ecological concerns. David Nielsen, a professor at Southern Adventist University, who co-led the research, emphasized the negative impacts on native species and the sub subsequent need for more research to understand and potentially mitigate these effects. And if the conclusion that a large area of the United of the Eastern United States may be habitable 
to Dejaro is true, Nielsen said. It may present a major challenge for native species and further stress already fragile ecosystems. Because of how far jars have already spread and how fast they continue to spread, collaboration is vital for a project like this to succeed. With collaboration across institutes and with local communities, I consider it one of the greatest successes that we have been able to assemble a team spread across the southern United States and partner with several non-academic groups and individuals, Nielsen said. Jaro spiders are harmless to humans. Despite their non-native status and the potential ecological consequences, Jaro spiders are harmless to humans. Cole advises against using pesticides for the Jaro spider control, advocating for simple physical removal methods if they are found on structures. I will just smash them because I hate spiders. Their preference of outdoor habitats means that they are unlikely to venture into human dwellings, instead building their extensive webs on the exteriors and that ecological impact. There is an ongoing debate about the overall impact of the jar of spider. These spiders don't seem to care what gets in their web. They just as likely to eat brown marated stink bugs as they <coughs> are to eat a monarch butterfly. To say they're more beneficial than any other spider is just simply wrong. They're a spider, and if something gets caught in their web, it's going to get eaten. And they don't care if it's a rare native pollinator, and they are only a few of them left in the world, or if it's a brown marmorated stink bug. It's six of one or half dozen or another. It's the same thing. So basically, whatever falls in the spider's web, it's going to eat. Displacing native species. With this in mind, the <clears throat> ecological role of the jar of spider is very complex. The Clemens reported, report noted that while the exact mechanics of their spread are still being studied, one pattern is quite clear. Where you have an abundance of jaro spiders, you don't find others. This means the jaros are indisputably displacing native species, the research says. These are not just be, uh, being spiders coming to catch and kill bad things. These are pushing out native species and catching and killing whatever happens to get in their webs. Are they good or bad? It's very nu nuisance depending on your perspective. So the Jaro spiders are spe uh, species of spiders known as, and I'm not going to use the scientific name because I'll botch it up, uh, Technophila clavida, I guess, I don't know, which are part of the Orb Weber weaver family. They are native to East Asia, particularly Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and China. These spiders are known for their distinctive, brightly colored bodies and large, strong webs. In recent years, Jaro spiders have gained attention in the United States because they have been spotted in the southeastern states, including Georgia. Their expansion is being studied for potential ecological impacts. Despite their size and vivid appearance, Jaro spiders are not considered dangerous to humans as their venom is not harmful to us, and they tend to be re reclusive to bite. They do, however, play a role in controlling insect population, like most spiders. 
that's interesting, and I do not like spiders. Once again, I shall say that. But I will say this. If we could figure out how to take that spider web for us to use, a spider web is extremely strong. And if you could get that web and turn it like into a cable, I don't know the size of your pinky thing. Well, not everybody has the same size hands, but you get what I, you understand what I'm saying. The spider web is really, really strong. And if they could figure out a way to, to, to make that, man, we would be on to something there. So but anyway, that's my talk about spiders. Everybody have a good evening. This is Wolf Fang. Blessed be. Stay safe. And I'll chat with you all later. Bye.